What's up, y'all? My name is Kyle Luke, and I'm joined here by Jamal Andres. And today, we are going to be talking about, you know, the water cooler moments, everything from a most awkward family dinner conversation. Reek! You will give away the bride. To Stannis Baratheon grammar policemen. <laughs> We're only five seasons behind, guys. Stick with us. Before we get too far into it, I want to mention that uh, neither myself or Jamal have read the books, so there will be no book spoilers here. We have um, no intentions on reading the books, if you were wondering. However, we will be recapping last night's television show, um, so if you haven't seen that, stop watching right now. So And, and come back. Yeah. <laughs> and then come back. Yeah. So, to get started, I, I think that for all of us, here, the two of us, the awkward dinner was the, that was the moment for me for this episode. I love watching Sansa suffer, <laughs> watching Sansa just really just have trouble. So Kyle, to start with, can we just talk about how on the meter, where is Ramsey as far as crazy people go? So yeah, he's, the, he's, he's one of the most people in King's Landing. If you thought your drunk uncle at Thanksgiving was bad. I'm America, because that's where we are now, in the grabbage. Sansa doesn't want to hear a, a word of it, really. She has to sit at the, at the dinner table across from the man who killed her brother, and then the man who she thinks killed her other brothers <laughs> gets strolled in, completely beaten, completely defeated, and completely manipulated. On a metaphorical leash. Yeah, on a metaphorical <laughs> leash, exactly. In just the most twisted way. And meanwhile, Sansa just has to be sitting around like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Somebody who is coming to maybe potentially rescue Sansa, we don't know yet, um, is another winner, winner, I would say, of this last week's episode, and that is Stannis Baratheon, Grammar Policeman. Stannis Baratheon, Grammar Policeman, former I would argue one of the most hated people on the show, at least used to be. And now, all of a sudden, my theory, our theory, is that they're trying to up, George R. R. Martin is trying to up up his likability, I think. Yeah, you compare, you look at last week's, probably the most touching scene of last week with Stannis and his daughter. Everyone advised me to send you to the ruins of Valyria to live out your short life with the stone men before the sickness spread through the castle. I told them all to go to hell and I'm telling him that he loves his daughter. She is the princess of the Seven Kingdoms and she will be with him every step of the way. Aww. <laughs> um, it was really touching, it was a nice moment, and then flash forward to this weekend where they arguably give him the best line of the episode. And it was a quiet one and you might have missed it. It's fewer than rather than less than. Um, that was probably the most one of the more viral lines on Twitter and it was really funny and almost calculated in the sense that I think there's a real character rebuilding of Stannis Baratheon going on here. Which kind of freaks me out, because anytime we build characters up, George R.R. R. Martin likes to kill them. I will also say this about Stannis Baratheon. Whether you like him or not, he thinks big, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. already made more attempts at the Iron Throne than Khaleesi has, which is so oh, frustrating for me. How have how is Stannis Baratheon about to go his second go at it? Mm -hmm. And Khaleesi is still answering to the village people she's got to deal with. Yeah. She's like dealing with meetings. She's like stuck in an office, a, you know, middle century <laughs> office middle, right now. Middle century, middle management <laughs> over the middle management world that is Marine, the quagmire of Marine. <laughs> exactly. The one nice thing is we got to see the dragons in full on action this weekend. Which um, is always a good thing. Like when I was watching oh, the yeah. show, my my first like note was any episode that starts with dragons is a good episode. When uh, when when HBO gives you the the uh, the preview of what to uh, you know what to watch for in terms of what you should be worried about, like the rating system, and it says graphic violence, nudity. If they had dragons on there, you could guarantee everybody <laughs> would sign up and watch immediately. Every time, just taking a step outside of the show for a second, Peter Dinklage is amazing. I yeah, mean, just. He, this has been his coming out party ever since he stepped foot on camera on set. Absolutely. I mean, I've loved, he steals every scene he's in, like the one where he almost got grayscale. Yeah, I'm not sure let's, what the verb yeah, is. Yeah, so let's talk about probably the most action-packed part of the episode, and that is the stone men descending upon the water. Stone men, don't let them touch you. Really, really enjoyed the scene itself. 
Um, my first thought was that it was something that was gonna come after them because he had just got through mentioning yeah. the the gray the uh, stone men, right. if you will. Right. Um, yeah. It was something we, yeah, I agree with you. I, 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 as soon as it hit the water, I knew there was trouble to be found. And it interrupted this beautiful moment between <laughs> Tyrion and Jorah, where they're reciting this ancient text of uh, the Valyrian legend, and they're going back and forth and just establishing this real rapport. And you're like, oh, these guys are gonna get along. They're gonna be friends. Right, right. And then a stone man falls into the water and attacks the boat, and all hell breaks loose. Exactly. Real quick, did you think Tyrion was gonna survive that moment? Did yes. You, or, okay, you did. Okay. For, I, okay. So just full disclaimer for now and any future episodes, I don't think they're going to t kill Tyrion. Mm. When it's all said and done, when when they finish the series. Oh, is this a prediction? This is a prediction. Nice. When they finish the series, Tyrion is going to still be alive, no matter what situation oh. George R. R. Martin puts him in. He's gonna make it out because you can't have this show without people. Nice. That's a, I like it. That's a bold line, and I'm can't. in for it. I agree with that. I, I think I agree with that. And then, you know, we, we discover that Jorah now has, uh, has been touched by the stone men. Touched by the stone which, men. Which is not a good thing. Now, I mean, here's the other thing. Yeah. When, when Tyrion hit the water and was being dragged, I thought he got touched as well. I was wondering about that. And yeah. so, you know, they... So, because the director shows the grayscale on, Jor on Jorah, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that... Tyrion must be fine. But, I mean, it would totally be plausible for two, three, four episodes from now, yeah. Tyrion looks and finds this really problematic and issue. And it's just like taking over <laughs> like taking his over entire body because right, he's so right, right, small, right. there's not very much of him to take over. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, so like, he's a quarter of the way there. Yeah. So, now we are moving to our rapid fire predictions. Quick, 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 quick. We're gonna make this as quick as possible. First one from me, Jorah dies. Three episodes, four max, Jorah does not make it grayscale or something else. I was gonna say, so you think it's grayscale <laughs> or do you think it's gonna be another like in combat would, or Danny kills him, total, it would dragon be breath, <laughs> any of those things? It would be totally poetic for him to finally, I'm gonna just throw a bold prediction out there, finally makes it to Marine, he gets the help that he needs with the grayscale, dies from something completely random. Okay. Something completely different. I could, yeah, I could, I could see him struggling violently, carrying Tyrion <laughs> up the steps of Marine, dropping him off at the feet of Danny, and then going down <laughs> in zombie Stone Man style, <laughs> takes over. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I don't think Jorah lives throughout the end of the season. Um, I think his his days are numbered in the George R. R. Martin universe. My bold prediction is I'm not even positive they make it to Marine by the end of the season. I think they still have a little ways to go on this journey, and I think that they need. They're going to want to flesh out exactly what is going on with with Jorah and the Grayscale and with Tyrion and this and this, you know, George R. R. Martin seems to love these little buddy cop side <laughs> side projects as evidence with Jamie and uh and Dorn right now. Yep, so I could see yep, this playing out yep. for a little bit longer as well. So moving on, I hate to be boring, guys. I'm sorry. But I do think that Tyrion and Daenerys Targaryen are gonna get along. I think that that I think that Tyrion makes it. I think after Queen of Dragons gets over the initial shock of this, you know, drunkard. Yeah. <laughs> they really get along. They make a good team. They make a great team, wouldn't they? I, I can't imagine. I think that that is what finally gets the Queen of Dragons all out of the office. <laughs> Position to take over the throne. Position to make moves. I am, I am extraordinarily excited about the Queen of Dragons finally leaving the the, uh, the metaphorical cage she is in. Yeah. My prediction is we like Stannis too much right now. He's, he's become this everyone's favorite character in the last two episodes. Everybody has seen a softer side of Stannis. They've seen the warrior side of Stannis. Everybody's on Team Stannis right now. And what does that mean? He's going to die. I think that he is marching on Winterfell to go take down the Boltons, and I think something bad happens in the time that he gets to Winterfell that hurts his army, that puts him at a disadvantage, and I think the Boltons win that battle. Um, so he makes it. So he makes it down. Yeah, but yeah. doesn't make it through the battle. I think. I think. I think he loses the battle, and I'm. We might lose Stannis. I just feel like we're so we're so up on Stannis right now. You're giving um, him fun lines. Yeah, he's he's funny. <laughs> what the hell did that happen? He's a funny guy now. <laughs> I just. I I worry that. Stannis' days might be numbered as well throughout the end of the season. Awesome. Well, thank you for watching. Great. We'll be back next week uh, recapping all of the things Game Thrones.